4, Fairbanks, a small community with a population of 2,500, held its first winter carnival to celebrate the coming of spring. By 1938, the now four-day celebration was officially called the Ice Carnival and Dog Derby. March 8th, 9th, and 10th were full of activities. Music, dancing, parades, sporting events, and dog races were a major feature of the celebration, and the ice carnival was the other. The ice carnival featured an ice throne to stage the crowning of the carnival queen and king. The sculptures were the focal point for carnival activities. This was the beginning of the event that is still celebrated today. This historical footage is from the 1936 carnival. The thrones became more elaborate, larger, and intricate. The first throne in 1934 was built to be functional. Water was frozen over a frame to serve as a backdrop. It was nice, but not at all elaborate. This simple but significant structure was created by one of Fairbanks' earliest recorded ice sculptors, Pietro Vigna. He went on year after year, building increasingly more complex and detailed structures. He engineered and built the 1939 Four Igloo Ice Throne, a forest transplanted just for the aesthetic effect surrounded the throne. Another well-known artist, Ted Lambert, built a beautiful ice cabin for the 1934 celebration. It was a realistic looking 12-foot square bush style cabin made of ice. When it was illuminated by powerful carbon vector lights, the locals referred to it as an ice palace. They would dress in traditional bush garb and pose for pictures. Ted Lambert also built a striking ice castle for the 1938 Ice Carnival and designed a commemorative stamp in celebration of the event. These early ice sculpting pioneers set the stage for the future and today's sculptors are carrying on the tradition with enthusiasm. Ice sculptures created by local and visiting sculptors are important to the continuing celebration rooted in the festivals beginning in 1934. A dog race is still held coinciding with the event. The Open North American Championship Sled Dog Race and Ice Art are Fairbanks, Alaska's grand celebration of the coming of spring. Ice Alaska was started in 1989 and has steadily grown into a worldwide recognized international event with sculptors coming from many countries. There are a little under 100 participants and as many as 400 volunteers. Many Alaskan businesses and organizations are sponsors of this event each year. Fairbanks, Alaska makes the event possible because of its unique weather environment. Not only providing good conditions for the sculpting, but also for the harvesting of ice blocks used in the event. Harvesting the millions of tons of ice needed for the event is a huge undertaking. Ice is harvested on site at Ice Park. 
the ice is cleared, marked, and scribed to prepare the ice for the final cut. A chainsaw mounted on a sled jig is used to cut ice pieces. Each block is cut, then pulled over to be lifted from the pond by an extend-a-boom forklift. Volunteers harvest several times a month from November through March. Quite a supply of ice even gets wrapped in plastic and stored under sawdust through the summer for the early sculptures in October. It takes a number of experienced volunteers to harvest the amount of ice necessary to put on the World Ice Art Championships. The single block classic event serves as a qualifier for the Winter Olympics Art Festival. For the single block event, there is a maximum of two sculptors who are given a block of ice that is 8 feet by 5 feet by 3 feet from which to create their art. A first place winner in the single block realistic competition was a sculpture entitled Leap, sculpted by a two-man crew from the USA. We see the sculpting in progress, day one, day two, and day three. Single block creations, both realistic and abstract, range in a great variety of subject matter. The multi-block competition can have a maximum of four sculptors who are given 10 blocks of ice, 66 inches by 44 inches by 36 inches from which to create their ice art. It takes heavy equipment and a lot of ingenuity to move the blocks into place while assembling these sculptures. Participants may not use heavy equipment other than the equipment provided by ICE Alaska. The team spends several days performing tedious work in order to complete a sculpture. Here we see a time-lapse video of just one day and night of work being done on a sculpture. Sometimes, after days of hard work, a sculpture may fall and never be completed. Such is the case of this sculpture, entitled The Birth of the Bluebird. A sculpture that was created by a team from China was entitled On Time and was an image of a horse team and stagecoach that looked like it was out of a Western movie.
A multi-block sculpture constructed by a team from the USA was entitled Animal Parade and won first place in the realistic competition. An ice creation entitled Panda's Sacred Garden was not so surprisingly constructed by a team from China. The sculpture has extreme detail. These ice chains were the size of real chains. A first place winner of the abstract multi-block competition was sculpted by a team from the USA and was entitled Gateway. Sculptures featured in this presentation were from Ice Art 2005. A very popular feature of Ice Art is the Kids Park. Construction of this Kids Park began in late December with the arrival of four artists and constructors from Harbin, China. With the help of many other Ice Alaska volunteers, the magical Kids Park came to life. The Chinese sculpture team constructed this slide entitled the Great Wall Slide. They used new fluorescent lighting techniques that made the slide glow at night. The kids parks are always a great success each year and add to the festive atmosphere of the event, helping to make it Fairbanks, Alaska's grand celebration of the coming of spring.